Hi. Um, welcome to the Ward 5 uh, community meeting. This is our fourth one this year, but I'll, I won't embellish here. One of them was sort of a mini meeting for those concerned with the particular area of Ward 5. I'm Ian Beauregard. I'm your Ward 5 city councilor, 774-297-4939. Or a Borgard at cobma.us. So the idea of these meetings is, first of all, so you know who I am, and so if you're frustrated, you know who to hunt down. No, um, two, <laughs> um, to meet different people and get different information on what's going on, because I keep on telling everybody, you own this. You cannot put it on eBay. And you cannot have a yard sale. You own Brockton. So the more you're involved with making it, you know, and learning about it to be better for yourself and for everybody else, the better it is for everyone. So I'm going to let my um, colleague, Wynne Farrell, the at-large city councilor, one of the five city councilors ready to serve you in Ward 5. Okay, and he can be reached at 508-272-9880. And he'd love to hear from you if you have concerns, quite honestly, because that's what we're trying to do is help you and in many instances try to prevent something from escalating because uh, there's been those times. So he's going first because his lo a longtime wife's birthday is today and she allowed, no, I'm kidding you. She said it was all right if he came here for a little while and uh, spoke with all of you because it was just sheer coincidence that we locked this in. Fill you in on a couple of things and just familiarize yourself with the fact that Wynn is here to serve you too. Thank you. The real reason she's being nice to me is that I ruptured my Achilles tendon back in June and I'm just bouncing back. So as you see me sway back and forth, I always tell people I didn't leave the latest or the closest gin mill and, you know, have a great afternoon. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, this ain't your average body to rehab, but we are making progress. So uh, I go to these meetings across the city because I learn a lot and I think politics is about hearing from people. Uh, hearing their concerns, hearing their criticism, so I thank all of you for coming. The one thing that I'm going to talk about tonight, I think, is it's something brand new. None of us really know that much about it. It's the retail marijuana industry. And as you probably have read in the newspaper, um, it was passed by referendum on the state ballot in 2016. And as a result, we will be having uh, eight shops, retail locations to begin with in Brockton. Two of them will be the medical marijuana dispensaries up in West Chestnut Street. There will be six others somewhere in the city. And the Ordinance Committee of the City Council where I sit is currently looking at three different aspects. The licensing application process, the business regulations, and then the zoning. So we will be having an open forum tomorrow evening at the Arnone School. It'll be the second one. There are five of us that are sponsoring that. We welcome anyone to come in and offer comments. Then on the 18th of October at uh, the Little Theater at Brockton High School, we'll be having an ordinance committee meeting. And I think we'll really start drilling down into the nuts and bolts of licensing and business regulations. And then whatever comes out of that meeting will be referred to the full council for consideration. And then ultimately it will be voted on and it will become an ordinance which regulates this new industry. So uh, again, it's, it's brand new. I mean, it, it, it has the potential for being very beneficial. We don't know because Massachusetts has never done it. Uh, and good evening to Councilor Castro and Mr. Lawton. You're welcome. So we're proceeding cautiously. We're, we're obviously when you put together public policy that affects a whole city, you want to listen, you want to have input from as many people as possible, and you want to craft a policy that's fair to both sides because 16,000 people in Brockton voted yes, they want, uh, 17,000 voted yes, they want marijuana, but 16,000 didn't. It was about 1,100 vote difference. So. I mean, obviously, we don't want to kick aside the people who didn't want it, but we want to support the people who are willing to invest in it 
and potentially bring something into the city that will give us revenues to support the schools, public safety, libraries, and some of the other city services. So that's where we stand chronologically. Open forum tomorrow night, uh, uh, October 18th, the Ordinance Committee meeting, and then at some point in the future, it will go before the full council. And with that, I think it's more important for me to listen to you. If anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, if not, we certainly encourage you to come to these meetings or if they're rebroadcast to watch them. That's one of the great benefits of having Brockton community access. A lot of people come home from work, they're tired, they've got to get up the next day, they've got to go out early. So if you miss something like this or you miss one of our meetings, at least you can catch up with the news of the city by watching Brockton Community Access and finding out what, exactly what's going on. And then call one of us if you have a follow-up question or a comment. So, so if anyone has anything, yes, uh, Lynn. Um, thanks for coming, Lynn. Thanks, Ann, for putting this on. I was on the Main Street in front of this library when the young man on the motorbike or ATV was weaving up and down Main Street, came up on the sidewalk here in front of the library, the kids scattered as he headed south on Main. He was eventually apprehended. I understand from watching uh, a meeting the other night that there's an issue about traffic officers and coverage of traffic officers um, in the city. And I just wondered if you might be able to touch on that, especially as it affects us here in Wood 5? Well, coming from the police department, which is where I spent the majority of my career here in Brockton, traffic enforcement is everyone's responsibility. When I was a patrolman, when I was a sergeant, if somebody blew through a red light or somebody was crossing over a double yellow line or went through a stop sign, you'd pull them over, you'd give them a citation, whether it's a warning or a traffic citation with a fine. Now, unfortunately, what we're hearing is, well, we don't have enough people. We're answering too many calls. And, of course, I don't buy that because if you're stopped with a motorist and you get an emergency call, take the person's information down, give them back the license and registration, and go off and handle the call. Now, with these cell phones, you just literally can take out your phone, take a picture of the person's driver's license, you've got all of their data, you can go on to the emergency call and mail them a citation. So the first thing I would say is we don't do enough traffic enforcement. It's everyone's responsibility. There are officers assigned to traffic enforcement, but they're coming off shortly to do background checks on the new recruits. And I think that's a mistake because one of the things that isn't mentioned, we have a significant school population that walk to schools. I don't want people on sidewalks. I mean, I don't want people blowing through stop signs. I don't want people going through a red light and not watching who's in a pedestrian walkway. So there's a lot of reasons why you do traffic enforcement, and some of it is to get the message out to drivers, pay attention. Somebody mentioned to me today, you would never do in West Bridgewater what you do here. I mean, in West Bridgewater, you literally watch everything you're doing because they are very proactive, and I, I think we need to be more proactive in, in Brockton, not only in Ward 5, but everywhere. And it, it just gets the message out that we expect you to pay attention. And we expect you to drive safely and we want to protect the thousands of kids that have to walk to the neighborhood schools. And you know, the younger ones, they don't pay as much attention as we'd like. And I don't need people near sidewalks. I don't need people running stop signs or doing things like that. So the answer to it is, you really need to beef up traffic enforcement in the city. The police have to step it up. And, and I really don't have any problem saying that. It's not a criticism, it's just a reality. May I just say that the officer involved was very um, sensitive to the situation. And as soon as that bike went up on the sidewalk, he backed off. Yeah. And he radioed ahead, knowing the direction. So it could have escalated to some serious damage. But it was very scary to watch kids and library patrons scatter on the sidewalk. On the oh, ab absolutely. And there are times when you've got to break off the pursuit. You, you've just got to weigh the public safety benefits versus the risks and, uh, and hope. Usually you catch up with someone like that a week or a month later. They tend to return back to the area. So, 
Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, but I didn't catch where the meeting is tomorrow night. It's at the Arnone Little Theater, uh, the Arnone Theater again on Belmont Street, okay. where where the first one is. Very oh, comfortable. Yeah, 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 very comfortable, and yeah. for the people who attend. And, excuse me. Six thirty. Six thirty to wait. Okay. Should we save on that or more questions and comments for that time? Yeah, I mean, I would. I think that's where you're going to get all of the other counselors. Uh, so it's probably the best way to go. Yeah. Yes, miss. Um, uh, talking about um, regarding public safety, um, um, I have a couple of neighbors here that we have in counties, um, some situations with um, us trying to contact police. I understand that sometimes they have other emergencies, but you know, it's like, I think it has been like a little bit uh, overwhelming, having to wait like five, six hours for police officers to show when we call. You know, like sometimes we have been redirected to call this other number, uh, kind of like non-related emergencies. Right? Oh, nine four one two hundred. So it's like another number that they provide us. Um, and, uh, we have been encountering like a number of uh, burglaries in our street before uh, our street. Uh, we have been targeted with like a number of um, drug dealing situations. Um, in the corner of my neighbor here, um, been, he has been a couple of times calling 911 because they have needles and stuff uh, in the corner of his house. So it's, it has become an issue now for us because uh, there has been like a number of incidents where like about 10, uh, 12 cars in our neighborhood have been targeted by TIFF. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, they have been breaking into our trunks, uh, stealing stuff. Uh, I don't know, you want to talk a little bit about that incident? Well, no, basically, my, my, my house, I just had a, a motor home broken into oh. all my stuff was stolen. Mm -hmm. So you need yeah. crime watch. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 50, 50 yeah. needles on the side of my house, yeah. oh. which the special response team came down to pick them up. Yeah. You know, her, her husband and myself, he says, come on, we'll go clean up. Probably. So they did eventually send somebody down. What's like Mason Street and Stanford Street. Mason and Stanford Street. And, and it's, it's getting to a point where I wrote a letter to the chief the other day explaining what was happening. And I said, by the way, there's a drug deal going on in front of my house while I'm writing this. Mm -hmm. And I read it on the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 you're I, saying you can look out the window and watch a drug deal go on by while you're writing the chief. Yeah. You don't hear anything back. Yeah. I'm kind of, kind of upset. The concerning you, you, thing has been that uh, whoever broke into his trailer, they were staying there like probably a couple of nights. Oh, no, without they know five, five yeah. pizza boxes, yeah. a sub sandwich. Mm -hmm. They had to spend a couple of nights there. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. I think I think it would be worthwhile because you've got a, a localized area to have Officer Healy get together with the neighbors down in that area and maybe put together a focused crime watch group and, and give you some ideas about you know, writing down information. I, I will say that when someone calls in a drug deal in front of their house, don't be surprised if, you know, they don't send someone undercover in an unmarked car by to make observations. You probably might not notice it, but, but they're, the, the NACO people are pretty proactive. I mean, they, they compile data and... I've already had officers sit around the front of my house because my son belongs to the club across the street from the police station. Okay, yeah. Most of the officers that are okay. yeah. yeah. And one of his friends came up and spent some time in the kitchen. Yeah. They know they're there. Okay. And, you know, a drug deal, they come up, they park in front of my house one way, another car comes up, parks this way, the drugs go, zip, they're gone. Yeah. And we, understand and we see that every night, every day. We understand that, you know, it's like that it's something happened like in a, in a split second, but, um, you know, I think that. What we're looking for here, being here today is like kind of to see, you know, like more police presence on our street. Yeah. Um, especially because you know all the burglaries it's been like for the past three weeks. It, every weekend, you know, it's like a couple of days in, in the weekend, uh, car has been breaking too. Um, and uh, you know, like it's like a safety concern. You know, it's like some of us, like for example myself, I leave my house at five thirty in the morning. I don't know, it's like who's watching or you know, it's like I don't want to be targeted. Um, and um, the um, I spoke with the sergeant um, William Slamer. I'm sorry, I, I can't speak his name. Uh, but I spoke with him yesterday, and uh, he he was very helpful. He said, you know, that he was going to try to look into 
having um, at least some police officer patrolling our street a little bit more. Um, but also in our street, you know, it's like lightning is a problem. Yeah. The street is pretty dark, and uh, you know, it's like I don't know. It's like maybe you can give us some guidance about how can we. Um, other people that we can, can connect with the city uh, and see maybe we can get like better lighting on the street. Uh, that might help. Yeah. Well, I think A, a meeting with Officer Healy, B, maybe some increased lighting, C, a directed patrol assignment the chief can hand down about that particular area. He won't target your house, but he'll just say, have cruisers periodically check this particular area. We never see like the police officer driving through our street. And he said, you know, unless you know, there's yeah. any concerns, you know, they don't patch all the streets. Uh, and you know, it's like maybe that, that they won't be more aware about that. Um, the other issue that we've done is like over, um, overgrown trees yeah. down through the city. Mm -hmm. I don't know if like that, that would be like another helpful thing, you know, to so have some of those streets go down because, you know, it's like since there's that much lining, you know, so it's too dark. Yeah, citywide we need more police visibility. Yeah. I, mean, oh, I think yes. we've all talked about that. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, they're at the playground all the time. Yeah. 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 Said the drug business, no problem from the street. With the lack of police presence at my house, we like to call New Year's Eve. That's the only show once a year. So that's the only time we see them. So not only that, but a lot of people, small street as it is, it's also a racetrack. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. floor it. I mean, there's a house at the end of the street. So if anything goes wrong, people crash into that house. Yeah. You know, so with the lack of police presence, they think it's like from, they don't fear. Oh, that, yeah, so that's true. Yeah. Until we have that, I don't think anything's going to change. Yeah. In the park? Yeah. Uh, the beach park. Beach park. Yeah. Park. So, yeah. Park. Yeah. Park. Yeah. There's a safe streets meeting next week. Yeah. Yeah, no, so that's a perfect place for all of you to go. Okay. That, that uh, people in there, <coughs> the Rockford Police Department, State Police Department, DEA, 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 DEA's, DEA's, DEA's office. Uh, DEA's office, and we'll tell you about anything
what that means is people on the street get together and they form like a neighborhood group. And it's not just crime. It's let's get to know each other. Let's have a block for our kids. Let's do an Easter egg hunt. It's what's called asset-based uh, organizing. So it's not on a negative crime. It's on let's get to know each other. And if this is an issue, then we'll learn. I teach my resident leaders how to go to the traffic commission. I teach them who in the city is responsible for what so that you are bringing your issue to the appropriate person. So if you'd like to learn about that program, right here in the library, October 17th, we're graduating a class of 35 <laughs> resident leaders, and we start our next training in January. So that's another thing on top of the Neighborhood Watch, the Neighborhood Associations, and then the Safe Streets Union. My dad used to say, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. But then he looked at me and said, well, that's because there's a nut loose. <laughs> but you have to keep raising your voice. You do. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I can't agree with you more. I think you need more police visibility, more patrol officers. Uh, I do think we're top heavy. I voted against additional supervisors. Um, you know, it just, it, 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 there's, there's going to be a mindset that this is what we need and let's work slowly to get there. And that's, that's everything. It does take revenue. By the way, part of the reason Fall River has so many more officers is that their salary levels aren't as high as ours. Yeah, there you go. And, and I, I uh, you know, I, having spent so many years there, I love all the men and women at the police department, but you've got to be sensible about your salary levels because that constrains how many people you can hire. I'm, I'm sorry? You were part of the zoning board? No, there's an independent zoning board that's approved, by, appointed by the mayor and approved by us, but we do go to zoning meetings and we, we make our feelings known about different issues. Uh, oh, yes. We're, we're very concerned about the uh, Court Street LLC, trying to put the two streets and the three houses in um, Quincy Street and Center Street and then Patch of Woods. You come down yeah. Oh yes, I, I know what you're talking Is that about. The one you're yes. On? Yeah. yeah. One of my. Turn back to the board that we heard. Yeah. That's the last we heard. No, no, it didn't. It, it didn't go back to planning. It. It's, it was assigned to go back to planning. This is you're talking about where um oh man, what was the name of the street? Cranston Street. It was supposed to be yeah. called and whatever. It doesn't um. And to yes, and then they wanted to. So no, I was at the zoning board meeting. And there were a few people, you know, speaking in opposition. And there wasn't enough, uh, how would I say, for them to go forward. So to my knowledge, they need to go back, they need to go to planning. Okay, they're not on the schedule yet. The next planning board meeting is, I gotta remember this now, because it's on a Wednesday, normally it's on a Tuesday, it's the day after the election. So it will be on the 7th of November, okay. So that is really um, you know, important for people to, uh, to understand. We're gonna let you know. This is on the city's website. It has to be, it's in the newspapers, because by law it has to be. And anyone can you know, call me and email me, but this, it will be, there will be a planning board meeting. Whether or not that gets on to the agenda is a whole nother story, because they're responsible for getting the documentation in at a certain point. And this is how I wanted, you know, uh, it, want people to understand that. Yes, sir. How are they going to allow any intrusion off of Center Street, which is a state highway, in between Chang Chung and Subway for a street? Doesn't the state have to approve? But they're probably. So this, this is so. what I mean. They are not nearly there. Okay. But this is why we want people to speak up, and we encourage people. And I will do this over and over again. Show up at every meeting you can. If you cannot, you can email us, and you can call us, or you can write to us. Because all this has to be read in public at these public meetings. Let's say that you were lucky enough to be in Florida that week, and you can't make it. You can email us, and we will stand there and email. Or the, the head of um, the zoning board, the chair, is uh, retired fire chief Gallagher, Ken Gallagher. 
and he will read that into a document that's illegal, you know, and it's, and it's done, so it demonstrates your concern. Believe me, you're one of several people that is concerned about that particular situation, and um, there was already a petition going around. Uh, by the way, very important people, you cannot put any petitions in the mailbox, okay? <laughs> that's a federal offense. You can't just slide it in somewhere else, but no, in all honesty, um, two petitions went out in opposition of that, okay? And chances are they will come out again. Again, these pet petitions are photocopied and put into the file in, you know, this opposition, and it's also read by the public that such a thing, you know, document exists. But don't they have, don't they have them approval to petition the city? No. From the from the state approval already before oh, they petition for a road going up. The oh, state that road. that they probably they might have to go yeah. along that, and I can have the gentleman in front of you with the neon outfit here um, answer that because he works for Old Colony Planning Council, which handles roads and planning for for the for the this region of the Commonwealth. So that he could be answered in detail, you know, what is necessary. But I don't want, you know, in this, you know, you're justifiably concerned, and I totally agree with you, and having grown up on Crane Road, which is not far from there, way back in 62, that you have, um, that this is one of these situations where I can totally say to you, they are so far away from doing that, it's like someone that thinks about their kid going to college the day after they're born. It's a ways, believe me, from even thinking about happening, and the likelihood that it would happen is pretty slim because it's also you have to go through conservation and there's wetlands there right. and there's a lot of it right. that right. adheres to that. Yes, and it gets very complicated with that. And we have two, we have an agent who works for the city, very soft spoken, brilliant woman, and there's also an agent, um, what was they say, uh, an outside consultant that has to review in often instances. And I want to clear up in most instances when the outside eight, it, consulting firm that is also an environmental engineering firm, they are not paid by the taxpayer, they are paid by the developer that's proposing such a thing in, in, in most instances. So I want to, you know, so that people understand that we're looking out to protect you. I always ask these questions because you're not expected to, to know all this off the top of your head, but just so you realize in this particular instance, I can say to you, 99.9%, they, they are very, very far away from doing anything, okay? Because they have so many steps to go through. And the likelihood that they get through all those steps is extremely slim. So that one I can say. The other one that you asked me However, about. However, it's always good to be proactive. Right. Always, always pay attention. Mm -hmm. Do not ever feel that your emails are being neglected. It might take some time sometimes to respond to them. Um, but, you know, because we, we bounce around from different things, and I won't lie to you, the marijuana thing's been big because everyone in the state that's involved in this, we've never been here before. So that's more complicated. Plus, the different things that pop up periodically. And, uh, you know. But, by the way, yes. does everyone know you can get the agenda for any, any board or commission online? You just go to the City of Brockton website, and then yes. you go to government, and it'll drop down, and it'll say agendas, all agendas, and it's, you know, if planning uh, has something, yeah. they have to be posted 48 hours in advance of the meeting, but you, you go to that website, and you'll, you'll be able to see every agenda item that's coming in, so no one can, you know, slide something in that uh, we don't know about. Well, you know? Yes, sir. The reason we found out about it, because I think it was in July, we got a notice, June and July, we yeah. post got yeah. the mail about yeah. the hearing. The hearing was in August, they delayed it until some date in the future. Yes. And we just never get any follow-up cards in the mail about when it's rescheduled. We just well, we did have it rescheduled. That I can tell you. Because, right, I, I understand that, that, but why, why did you send another subsequent postcard like you were for the initial meeting in the post I know that. That, that's, that's not, that's not required at the state. So did you send out an initial notice in the mail that it's an hearing and everything was delayed and you're on your own and keep track of what it's going to happen? Well, that, no, you'll receive another one when the next meeting comes because they are obligated by law to forward that to you. Okay. Yeah, but, but there will be something in the pay for those of you who get the enterprise. They do publish a legal notice saying planning board, city of Brockton, and it'll have the different agenda the items, which you won't get the yeah. individual card. But if they opened the meeting and they yeah. continued the matter, right. you don't right. get another right. notice. Right. That's my point. You, yeah. you should be notified every time they delayed it yeah. or they postponed it. 
You should be re-notified. Well, believe me, I'll be going around and, and leaving notes to you guys. Like that. One of the, it'll be something like this in a bold color, letting you know to come. Yeah. <laughs> it really makes a difference to show up. It really does. Yes. Oh, no, but that, that shouldn't be your responsibility. That should be the, the city's responsibility. It you know, should be the developer's it, it, responsibility. The third is the family to cover the postage to re-notify yes. everybody else. That's how it should work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the ones that want it. They should be fucking all the way. Couldn't agree with you. And in some instances that I will say that they do, you know, send it out. But in most instances, I can say. Because a couple years ago, when they did the development on Pinehurst with Middleton, the two houses they built oh, yes. on Pinehurst, we got multiple notes in the mail, and then we approved. We had no objection to oh, yes. did it not a house down that was there. It was, it was a oh, falling yes. down on stuff yeah. anyway. But, I mean, we got two or three notices about the second meeting that came up. About, no, 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 I don't get getting with this. Just about okay, that. I think, though, I can't speak on that one. One time it was planning, and one time it was zoning. So that's that's two separate governing bodies. So the whole, this, thing, the whole thing was a little slippery anyways. Yes. Because it was Court Street LLC. Well, we don't really I know, I can figure it out. Oh, no. oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes, I, I went looking through that. Believe me, because when I think of Court Street, yeah. I think of the going hill. to get, yeah. yes, the hill, kind of spelling the whole bit, going to yeah. Addington. Yes. Right. So it wasn't even on Court Street. So very, very deceptive. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Believe me, but I will say, and as I mentioned earlier, um, that you know, you have five counselors, you know, you have your ward counselor, and you have four at lodges. And I highlighted the fact that Wynn's retired, so he's at your back and call, 508-272-9880. No, but in all honesty, sometimes he can turn around and retrieve, you know, some information. That is, you know, necessary. You no, know, I'm going to find out when your birthday is, and I'm going to hold a meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you do, you do that. And, um, but that also, the other thing being is, you know, sometimes that, that it's just backup because we cannot emphasize that enough. We're trying to service you. We're trying to let you know everything that's going on. As I mentioned before, and not to, you know, how would I say it? Sound like a little whiner here, but. More is going on in Ward 5 than any other ward, any other ward right now. And it's just sheer coincidence. And that's why I'm trying to keep people you know, posted continuously, because I don't want people to go into shock and go down the street and all of a sudden it's, oh, and then you know, a, a skyscraper is coming up. No, I want everybody to know as much as possible all the time, believe me. And that's what was one of my goals, transparency. And the whole goal was educate and empower, because then you own this. And the more you know about it, and we want to help you. And uh, we stressed our disenchantment with the decision about traffic uh, police. And I believe that because of our expression of frustration, we might uh, get a turnaround on that. Progress. Yes. So we try so Like that this. expression goes, trust but verify. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And I mean, again, um, I can emphasize, you know, I, I can't thank Wayne enough, and I will release him, and I'll pull in all the other speakers. <laughs> and do, and, do keep after the crime yes. watch thing, because that's really important. Yes. And, and Ellie Wentworth, that you're sitting right next to, is the expert in the universe on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call Zayas up here, because Zayas is with Brockton Redevelopment Authority, BRA. And I want everyone to understand this. This is a federal government programs, programs, okay, these are basically federal employees, but they're called BRA because it's in Brockton. There is such a thing as, a, well, another BRA, Boston or Bellingham or what have you. But anyway, just so people understand that. And there's various programs and grants that come through. So he's just going to give you a little bit of mini information because we have so many older homes here. And a lot of them have lead paint. And for some of you, you know, you've been in your homes a while, so you've been, you know, maintaining things. Some of you just purchased it and might not have any idea. And some of you are renting in a situation, and then the, the um, landlord w would be responsible. So anyway, I'm just going to let him speak for about 10 minutes here. And sometimes what happens is this might not pertain to you, but you might have a relative or a friend that this can help. So please pass that on. So thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, you're over here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Zayas Andre. I am the home housing specialist 
at the Barack Community Development Authority. So we have uh, four programs going on. One, we have the first time home buyer down payment assistance, where an individual wants to buy a house for the first time, that low moderate income, they can get up to $12,500, $12,500, $10,000 from the BRA, and $2,500 from NeighborWorks if their mortgage is not an FHA. And we also have a facade improvement for business owners that wants to do a repairs in the exterior of their, uh, their business, so they can get up to $37,500. And then we also have a homeowner rehab in which an uh, individual can get up to $30,000 for do a, uh, emergency repairs. And now the city of Brockton was awarded a grant of $3 million to remove uh, lead from 142 apartments. So what we do in the lead program uh, is $10,000 $10, per unit. So for the second unit, if there's a tenant, so the owner has to uh, provide 15% of the cost. And then also what we do, because uh, sometimes for the work to be done, it takes about three to five days or sometimes longer. So we give up to $350 for relocation uh, to accommodate for the, the tenants or the landlords. And uh, I have an application here. If anyone wants to have a relative, relative you want to pass it on to them, uh, that would be great, that would be helpful. Yeah. Just so people realize, he is on 70 School Street. Correct. And 50 School Street. 50 School Street, okay, because the building is 60, 50, and 70. And that you, I know that Laura is in charge of the program, and uh, it's, it's their associates, and that you find yourself going to various locations and helping people navigate the forms. Is that exactly. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's why this was, you know, like I said, brief, because this was a huge opportunity that came through us, what, in June of this year? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So that, that's why um, there's a bag of goodies here. He's going to leave some business cards. Here. But I just believe it's important and to, for people to know, you know about these situations. And again, we are an exception in the New England area that we have you know, the, the largest set of old homes that you know, have accumulated in this, this lead paint. And uh, it's available for any kind of questions if anyone has any. So who is eligible to apply? Who's going to apply? So anyone that under the 80% AMI. 80% of what's yes. AMI? The area medium income. And you have to own the house? Correct. And can you do it for your house and an apartment in the house? Yes, you can. And I have here, it goes by the household size. For example, for one person, the maximum income is 47150 For a household of eight people, the maximum income is $88,850. <clears throat> Any other questions? And do you provide the contractor or does the owner have to buy the contractor? We provide that. You provide, we the, provide the contractor. That. Exactly. To remove the exactly. And I guess how long is this going on? So for the next two years. Two years? Yes. Okay, so that's going on. So it's going to go by fast. Is that two years? Yes. Yep. Or until they run out of money. Or until they run out of money. <laughs> so that, that's free money. Free money. So what we do, we, do what? <coughs> we send an inspector to go test it out. So they do the whole house outside, the soil, everywhere. Yeah. So what we do, we put a five-year affordability in the house. That means uh, every, five, every year, the loan will go down 20%. After the five years, then you don't have to pay us back. But if you decide to sell the house, refinance, transfer the title within the five years, if it's in the third year, then 40% has to come back to us. The um, seniors home rehab program. The homeowner rehab? Yeah. Yes. Uh, are their income? The 80% AMI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, how long you got that license for over in Massachusetts? Do you have any people of the license to operate in Massachusetts? License for a... No, you, whatever you do is any type of period that you have to operate in Massachusetts or you go to the These are contracts. Yeah. Right. License Yes, they have to be, yeah. So how long you, you got that open or what? I'm afraid I... The contract. You already have a contract? Well, we already have ones, yeah. yeah. We already have them. Mm -hmm. so we have inspector and the contractor to do the work. Okay, okay so um, do we have a <coughs> number or something that they can yes. contact on a website? So I have a, a form here if you want to inquire about the, pro the, the program. 
So put it out, I'll take it back to Lara, and then she'll contact anyone that's uh, interested in the program. Okay, I can always bring those back too. And um, yes. Business cards? Yeah, business yeah, cards. Yeah, we get it. Okay. What do we have here for a phone number at 508-586-3887? And uh, Mr. Andre here and Ms. Laura's, oh, it's Emily's, oh, all right, well, I'll we'll say Emily's. Yes, oh, yes, 508-586-3887, and that's extension 4. But uh, also you can visit everybody at www.brottomedevelopmentauthority.com. Yes, so that's, uh, no. Say, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> 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 bring it down here because, um, you know, I always emphasize that these, a lot of stuff is downtown. The next person is a regular, yes. I always have Ron here because, again, these are services that are available to you in this city and they ha can help people a lot of times save themselves a ton of money and frustration in a lot of instances. And uh, Ron is right here at uh, 215 Main Street inside the courthouse. And I'll let you, him speak to you briefly. And he has some handouts and information too. And I can say in the past, you know, three and a half years that I've been on city council, I've had him come at every single meeting but one. And each time, it's just the way it worked out, and each time someone's been able to grab information and it's been able to help them in some way. And I'll cite one example. One woman was going to go to an attorney and it was gonna cost her $6,000 to put all her you know, information together for her estate. And instead she was able to work with Ron and that was good you know, because she had a tight income. So that's, that's what I wanna bring out. Okay, thank you, Ron, you wanna come up? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ron Freddy. I'm with the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. As Ann said, I am a regular to her meetings. Um, if you look at your agenda, what it, you'll see is it will say court services program. And uh, we, we tend to be thought of a court services program because our office is in the district court at 215 Main Street. And we provide free mediation services to the Brockton District Court and also the juvenile courts in Brockton and Plymouth. But more importantly, what we also do is we provide community mediation. We're funded from two sources. One is the um, Attorney General's Office. And the Attorney General's Office funds us for consumer mediation and consumer education. Our other funder is the Massachusetts Office of um, Public Collaboration. And it was changed for the Mass Office of Dispute Resolution, so it always stumps me for a moment. But the Mass Office of Public Collaboration, we call it MOPC. And um, they fund us for community mediation. And what that means is that if you have disputes uh, that are family disputes, if you have disputes with your neighbors, if you have disputes with landlord-tenant disputes, or business disputes, business-to-business -business disputes. If you call the Attorney General's office and you have a business-to-business -business dispute, they will not handle it for you. If you call our office, we will. Also, with the Attorney General's office, uh, we like to tell people about um, educational programs that are available surrounding things like housing, contractors, uh, retail scams, um, uh, how to hire a home improvement contractor, how to look up their uh, resources, how to buy a car, what to look for before you buy a car. We get contacted quite a bit from people after they've bought the car, when if we could educate them before they buy the car, people would be better off. Uh, while I'm here, I do want to mention a couple of scams that are going around. If you haven't heard about these already, one of them is the grandma, grandpa, Scams where people, anybody here have that happen to them where they get phone calls? Sure, we always get a couple of people. Right, that uh, the phone call goes something like, uh, hello, grandpa, hello, grandma, depending on the voice on the other end of the phone. This is, uh, and um, I'm in trouble, you know. 
and uh, really, um, they've been arrested somewhere and they need so much money to get out of jail and in order to do that you have to go down to uh, Walgreens and buy a green dot car or the Apple store and buy some gift cards and send the money right off in order to, uh, to take care of the issue. The other scam is the IRS scam. Anybody had the IRS call them? Uh, the IRS will not call you and tell you you're going to be arrested at any moment. <laughs> They just do not operate that way. They might send you a, an official looking letter in the mail, sometimes certified mail. That's when you really get nervous <laughs> when you're getting the certified letters. But they will not call you up and tell you that the police are on their way to arrest you if you don't go down to the store right now and buy them a gift card and send it off to them. And uh, I hear some chuckles, but unfortunately there are some people that are not aware of how things operate in this uh, environment and that they are falling for the scam which is the reason people keep doing it, is because they, they're making some money out of it. The other one, a little more obscure, is the jury duty scam. Anybody heard of the jury duty scam? You know, hello, this is so-and-so, I'm a clerk from the X, no, XYZ court, and I'm calling to let you know that the judge is mad as hell, and you didn't show up for jury duty today. He's issued a bench warrant for everybody that didn't show up today. I never got a notice, I never got a notice. I didn't get a notice, you know. Oh, well, I have my list right here. Spell your last name for me. Okay, F-R-E-D-E-Y. And you verify your address for me. Okay, it's this. And what's your social security number? <laughs> you know, and people are rattled. And when people rat are rattled and they're nervous and they think that there's a bench warrant for them, they wind up doing things that they don't normally think through. So I think Wynn said, uh, trust but verify. I'm here to tell you, don't trust, okay? Anybody that calls you on the phone looking for money, be very, very skeptical of that because it, a lot of times it will be a scam, okay? Uh, any questions on what we do, how we do it? Our, our services, by the way, are free, okay? Our mediation services are free. Yes? I'm sure you have the same complaint all the time. We have these same scams that have been going on for years. We have the telephone numbers that they use them. In this day and age, with all the ways of researching this, why can't they get a hold of these cell phones? Uh, I can't answer for them all the way. So yeah, I don't know why they about, don't. Well, like, what's being done I, I have, I'm not on that end of the business. I have no idea. Yeah. So I can't answer that question. So uh, while I'm here, just let me uh, give you my website. It's www. Um, my brochures and business cards are up here. It has this information, so you don't have to write it down. But it's double for the people at home. It's www.gbcdr, which stands for Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. org, o -R -G. and my phone number is 508-897-2868. Any other questions? Yes. What I do when I get those calls yeah. is everybody's phone nowadays, you can block them. Yeah. You know, no, I can only block up to 50 on my phone. I not only have, they change their numbers. They change their numbers. Isn't that wicked? Well, it's exactly the same reporting. It's the same crackly voice. What do you block the number the next day? The same crackly voice, you block that number. What happens, what happens is that these folks are so sophisticated now, what they are doing is they are getting a local number mm -hmm. so that if I get a call and it'll come in, it'll look like Hanson is calling me, yeah. somebody from Hanson locally, mm -hmm. and then I'll answer the phone and it'll be somebody from far off that is not from Hanson. So uh, again, you can only block so many of them. Uh, the, uh, the idea is to be educated about it. It's, it's annoying to get those kinds of calls, but as long as you're not responding to them, you know, I think you'd be better off. Any questions on any of that? Any other questions? Thank you very much for having me. I, ha I have uh, the man in the neon jacket, so I don't know if you want to come up and just say a couple of words and let people know uh, a little bit of what OCPC is doing right now. And this is Jimmy Pereira. And I have to collect the business cards. Um, no, but I'll, I'll give them my information. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, yeah, good. 
Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Jimmy Pereira. I am the Community Transportation Planner at Old County Planning Council. So uh, what we do uh, basically is uh, not every municipality can afford a full-time planner. So we are uh, basically sanctioned by the uh, state to help municipalities uh, for community planning, transportation planning. So if you go on some of the streets now, uh, like Pleasant Street, Center Street, you'll see uh, cords on the street, they're counting cars that go by, so we could do a study, a traffic study. Uh, you heard about two-way uh, Main Street as well, something that's coming down the line. But uh, recently, right now, we're starting our Long Range Transportation Plan. So you can visit the website, Old Colony Planning Council, ocpcrpa.org. I'll fill out the survey, and what this plan does is help us look at how we can basically plan for the future, plan for uh, the uh, horizon, looking at automated, automated uh, vehicles, looking at bicycle, pedestrian, uh, bike share programs, uh, making city uh, a walkable city and uh, uh, age uh, friendly city as well. Uh, but we can't do anything if you guys don't provide the feedback, so I implore you to please visit the website once again, ocpcrpa.org, uh, and uh, visit, you can see the calendar as well, we'll be having a list of events coming uh, soon on uh, the October 6th and 7th, uh, the, uh, Bill Hogan will be doing a bike rodeo as well at the uh, Salisbury Park, 2 p.m. also. So, hope to see you all there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Again, like I said, I want a lot of people to realize this is a city of almost 100,000 people, so a whole lot goes on here. And um, we constantly want to let people know and how sometimes something said tonight won't mean anything to you, and four weeks from now you'll be searching for the business card because something will arise. And, you know, as I say, you know, again, Dime can be reached at 508-584, oh, no, I'm sorry, 508 uh, 774-297-4939, that's the better number. And I'm gonna call up uh, Councilor Nicastro from Ward 4 because uh, she might you know, have a few things to highlight. She had her meeting a week ago and uh, we always have a couple of speakers uh, because so many issues surface and then we let people you know, ask questions and whatever and a few things we wanna bring up. So she's making her way up here, I think, yes, <laughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. Doesn't Councillor Beauregard have the best meetings? We always learn so much at them. Um, thank you for giving me a moment. Um, I did have a Ward 4 meeting last week. I had it in the community room at the B building at Campello High Rise. And it was very well attended, about 30 people, which was wonderful on a Thursday night in September. I'm grateful to everyone who came. Richard Linehan, a lieutenant at the police department, spoke. You can probably find the tape for it on the community access channel. I believe they are playing it. He gave an excellent conversation. And YouTube. Pardon? And YouTube. And YouTube as well, the Brockton channels on YouTube. Um, he gave an excellent talk about all of the programs that most of us don't know about that the police offer to help the addicted and the homeless in the city of Brockton. Very worthwhile finding and watching. Um, about, about all I'd say is it's now my 10th month on the city council and I'm in the process of drafting an ordinance to address noise issues. As many of you know, there are noise issues across the city, but especially in Ward 4, the ward that I'm responsible for. And so I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to submit that to the Ordinance Committee to start the process. And also I'm looking for some funding to purchase um, decibel meters, noise meters, for the police department to use to enforce this noise ordinance. So I guess I'll be beating the bushes for funding or looking for help with that. Otherwise, thank you for being here and thank you for your interest. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say is um, please vote on the first Tuesday in November, please vote. We have three ballot questions on, on the, at your ballot. We have um, races for governor and most of the state offices and for county offices. Please, please vote. You might think it doesn't make a difference, but it does. And it also makes a difference for the city of Brockton because the more people who vote in our community, the more attention is paid to us at the federal and state level. Please, I urge you to vote. The last day to register to vote is October 16th, and the hours of the Brockton Election Commission over there on first floor in City Hall is 8.30 to 4.30. Please vote. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, oh, you remember something?
something else? Yes. No, I was asking what, what you mean noise, what do you mean by noise? Oh. <laughs> Wild parties. <laughs> Um, pardon? Is there a noise ordinance now? Yes, we do have a noise ordinance now. Um, it's, it's kind of basic, and we, I, I think the needs of our city are such that we need to expand it, make it a little more clear and understandable. Noise is primarily gatherings, okay, that go on and involve loud music that go on for a long time. Um, you know, we have a lot of disturbances in the city that, that disturb a lot of the neighborhoods across the city, and we just need a better tool for addressing them so that the quality of life of all of our community um, is respected. So, yes? I just have one question in regards to the noise. Does the city offer some type of permit for it? For example, if I own a house, I'm going to have to have a house party on my house, and I know my family's going to be up till 1, 2 o'clock. Yes, it's a one-day license. Come in. Yes. Oh, yes. It's it's two. It's a little bit twofold here because. Uh, okay, this is, would be a private party. You having a bunch of people coming over. Okay. Well, I don't think they're going to tell you you can party till one in the morning. But uh, but outside, uh, inside, you can do what you want. Okay. Want to clear that up? But um, yes, if you wanted a gathering, a, you know, an extensive gathering or you, you can go to the license commission, and it's a form now because we had so many issues, and unfortunately, because of it, a fatality last summer at Myrtle Street, which is you know going southwest, and it was, this what came of it is, what is it, $50, and the permit apply. to apply, and then you come in front of the license commission, and you, you, know, you inform them of what's transpiring and have to go through the, the various points. Sylvia is the head of the commission, um, excuse me, she's the head of the office, and um, she would be able to, to give you the specifics. I'm sorry, you had a question? To yeah, I, I just was gonna say though, but I mean, if, I guess common sense probably prevails, so the <laughs> issues I think that um, Sylvia is talking about is the counselor, um, the councils are referring to are these large parties that are really not family gatherings. <laughs> Far from. But are really, you know, outside and they're intended to be more like concerts. I would say this. I have, I have a neighbor who had just moved in. He was having um, a 50th um, <laughs> birthday party for his wife. And so, you know, common sense prevails. And he came over and he went to everybody, every neighbor's house and said, hey, my wife is turning 50. We want to really kick this thing up. And are you okay with it? You know, it's going to be till, you know, 1, 2 in the morning. We've got tents outside and barbecue and all that stuff. And, you know, of course you say yes. I mean, your neighbors. So that, I think, is different than what we're, what, what the counselors are dealing with. Yeah. yeah okay. the, the reason I ask is because, to make a long story short, I was going to be for a, a house a family party for my grandmother. It was a seven. Oh, nice. Was at my mother's home in the next town. It was, uh, it was uh, for my grandma's birthday. Just to make a long story short, we just went around to all of our neighbors. Yeah. Hey, we have a party, we might be able to go Long story short, please they end up coming by, then we end up having our neighbors advocate for us the next day at the town meeting because we weren't aware at the town, 12 at the time. So we weren't aware we had the permit because we didn't think it would be that hot. You know, but that was a lot of learning experience for us. Yeah. I just want to understand what the block, what the block system is. Okay, so that, yeah, just, just so you realize, this arose too, because there was such a thing, and we kid you not, about party buses, and people were coming on the party bus, spending the money, arriving at someone's home, in a cover charge. With the cover charge, people selling were selling cars. liquor, <laughs> selling liquor, <laughs> selling food, and, and they had a license for nothing. And, I mean, besides being very, you know, unsafe on so many levels, it was extremely disruptive. And we're talking, you know, 150 people. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention the disc jockeys and the large uh, sound systems, yes. And this is a very alarming situation, yeah. So what is it now? Is it like 10 o'clock turning the noise down, 11 o'clock? That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to be 10 o'clock, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's supposed to be, yes. 
Well, the state law on disturbing the peace really doesn't specify a time. Right? But Bronton had something in particular for 10 o'clock, and um, the reason our colleague Wynne Farrell brought up, and we, you know, because you don't even think of this because of what's going on, is that uh, sometimes in, you know, domestic violence situations, apparently people will jack up, the, you know, the, the, the music, the television, and something really violent can be going on. And this was one of our frustrations too, as earlier people had alluded to, that the police took several hours to address these situations because, oh, you have a car accident on 24 in Brockton, and they have to go, because we, you know, it's broken up. And then they turn around and somebody calls about a loud party. But then you don't realize what can escalate with all that too. So that's, that's why my colleague is working on this because she was, how would I say it, uh, <laughs> stuck with the wild one this summer. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, we've, we've met a couple of people. We always want you, you know, to meet more. Um, this is a Ward 5 community meeting. Uh, I can be reached at 774-297-4939. The reason I repeat this is because when you're trying to get a number down is when you mess it up here. What I wanted to do was bring up a few things, and then afterwards, um, I'm going to, you know, give um, our... Um, cameraman uh, a break here and then we'll interact here and answer you know a variety of different questions that you people might have and if you wish to interact with the speakers too. So uh, I have a little list here. I want to point out that we always invite our wonderful colleagues in school committee. This is the fourth largest school system in the Commonwealth, okay? And uh, some of you might have kids in school, some of you might not, but that's pretty um, amazing. I mean, there's 351 communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with the fourth largest, that's, that's huge. So I wanna bring out here that Judy Sullivan, Ward 5 school committee person, could not be here tonight because she's around the block in contract negotiations for the next couple of hours, okay? But she can be reached at 508-588 9171 and uh, she she gets back to you believe me and follows up and she speaks from experience because she has two adult children that went through the Broughton school systems and they're doing great now and um, she was just very dedicated one of these people that did the PTA and the whole bit and she was just the, the right kind of person to do that also I always say to people that you are invited to all these meetings, unless we're in an executive session, and that surprises us more than it surprises you. So when we were asked to be in executive session, so I cannot emphasize that enough. You can come to a license commission meeting. You can come to a planning board meeting, a zoning board meeting. You can ask questions because, and I just highlighting those, can come to conservation. You can come to traffic. You have no idea how involved traffic gets. It's just something unbelievable. But when you have state highway and federal stuff going on, plus your regular little, little streets, plus the fact that you know you have a fire, de fire department that has to go all over, three hospitals, et cetera, it gets involved. So anyway, I'm gonna just do a couple of community announcements here. That holiday parade, the theme is your favorite book or movie from the holidays, and um, I think it's kind of fun. Anyway, anyone that wants to get involved with it, it's always the Saturday after Thanksgiving, but you're welcome to get involved with it. There's so many different things that transpire, and again, as I mentioned, you are always able to apply to be on boards and commissions in this community, and you fill out, you know, you do a little resume number and a letter of interest, you send it to the mayor's office. But if you have a particular passion for it, parks and recreation, what have you, let your city council know or one of the at-lodges and they can, they can put in a good word for you. Let's, I will phrase it like that. Okay, the other thing is I wanted to mention, like I said, there's a whole lot going on in Ward 5. Um, Apothecare is growing, like doubling the size and it's going across the street. Meanwhile, the hospital plans on growing some more which is, you know, I'm referring to Broughton Hospital. Meanwhile, Massasoit Community College has a new president, the first time they've ever had a female president, and she's ready and going out there in the community. Meanwhile, we have two, three traffic studies going on. One of them is the intersection of Plymouth and Center, okay? That we will see change, not tomorrow, but hopefully the next day. We have the other one, now I have to say this right, Crescent Lyman, 
Come on now, you're supposed to be helping me here. <laughs> and summer, okay? And that's where the fire department is because that is a very convoluted intersection. And then we also, going further down, is the Crescent and Quincy intersection that they plan on redoing also. Meanwhile, the one that had been done in, in kicking off here was the one from last year that we had had a special meeting for too, was Avon to West Bridgewater, Montello Street, Route 28, and the antiquated um, system. So they review everything. You know, you add a crosswalk and you wait and wait and wait and nothing's happening, all these cars going by. Or the exact opposite, and you're driving by at midnight because you've just left, um, you know, a, a, a wedding reception and you're cutting through here and you're looking and there's the yellow and red light. And you know, no one is crossing the street at midnight, uh, you know, on a Saturday night in the middle of the winter. But anyway, these are, these are the different things they look at. It takes a little bit of time, but we do see it transpire. Pleasant Street, Belmont Street, granted they're not in Ward 5, but we see you know, this activity going on. So there's a whole lot that takes place. And as it was you know, asked before about the question with the, the made up little neighborhood that they wanted to create at the intersection, well, behind um, the um, Chang Chong, and uh, they, like I said, this gets involved. We've had people come up to us in front of traffic because they need to put a few houses in and they want to do such and such. So they have to go to traffic, conservation, planning, and zoning. And that, oh, we forgot to mention site re review. And that is the only one that is a public meeting, not a public hearing. All the other ones you can speak at. That's the only one you cannot speak at. You can wait till it's over and go and ask questions. But all the other ones, you can. Site review takes place on the last Monday of the month at 10 o'clock in the GAR room, because it does not have to be a situation where it's ADA accessible. Site tech review, OK. All right, I'm, I'm calling it site review, tech review. Sorry, gang. And um, boy, you learn an awful lot, because so much, like I said, is transpiring. And I want to let people know that we have the parking garage that um, we'll name after me if this keeps up. But anyway, um, <laughs> but in all honesty, just so people realize, okay, first of all, it, it's, it's a grant, it's money given to the city, okay? And uh, of course you have to, we had to you know, have extend the situation because of now the steel tariffs and the cost of steel, there's a little bit more involved, but they're just to get, point out one situation. But just so people understand, your property taxes are not going to go up to pay this bill, okay? They might go up for a lot of other stuff, <laughs> but not that, okay? And just so people realize, that garage is already over two thirds full as soon as the, you know, it opens. Okay, because of the growth of W.B. Mason and brought to Neighborhood Health Center and three other, you know, situations, you know, businesses and what have you and state organizations. I am pushing for the issue on the Ganley building. And if you don't believe me, you can call the state senator's office at 617-722-1200 because I call him weekly on that because we're waiting to hear what the story is going to be. It's supposed to be the Department of Unemployment, but not as, as in, and what people view, it's supposed to be the call center where they, you know, people go through all their documentation. Now we're getting the runaround. We're not exactly pleased with that. And so we're following up on it. Meanwhile, to, um, to go back to the other buildings we're dealing with, we have some activity on 26 School Street. Well, yes, but that's going to take a little minute. We have these developers, and I'll be honest with you and very frank, most of them, how would I say it, don't really care how we think or feel. And they just want to do their thing. And this is why I continue to encourage people to come. And I'll cite an example last night, planning board meeting, Okay, one, one item was postponed, and I left there at 25 past nine, it started at five past six, and my colleague was still there till 10 o'clock, okay? One particular item, somebody wanted to put 14 houses in a particular area. Over 35 people showed up in opposition. Speaking up gets you somewhere. Have no fear, that was continued. So that is just an example of what I can say. Same thing goes on with the zoning board. 
And right now, due to the fact that the elevator is broken, it's being worked on, and you will see a new elevator. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 it is being worked on. We can attest to it. We see people doing it at night, not during the day. Okay, I want to stress that. Okay, so just so people realize that. Okay, so that was a few of the things. I had a little list here. What I also want to emphasize, and again, you can come to all these meetings and please, please do not hesitate to speak up. Because some people say, oh, no, they're not going to yeah, it's important. They're all legal meetings, so it's legally documented, the statements that are being made. Okay, right now I have two episodes on Elliott Street. Okay, one is somebody wants to put in some condos, okay? And no one came from the area last night. So I went around today with my little orange flyers to emphasize it's really important for people to pay attention to this because they want to put in Technically, nine condos, but that adds up to more traffic than people realize. Okay, the townhouse style, okay. And the statement is always made, well, anything's better than what we have now. No, it's not. If it's not good for the neighborhood, regardless. And this is why we emphasize that. They're not very happy with me, but too bad. Okay, they also don't live in Broughton when they come here to build. I just want to point that out. The other part that I want to mention to you, too, is the CSX property, where they used to have the railroad and everything, is under examination and review. And we really want to encourage people to pay attention to that, because that could be a huge project. I mean, enormous. And it's very important for people to realize the, the effect that can have on the neighborhood. And you say, oh, I'm lucky. I don't live near there. Huh. Yeah. What about the review form? What are they trying to put in there? Well, they, they have various proposals. Okay. And there's various criteria, because it's, it's kind of toxic in some parts of it. So they can't put up a house. Yes, Mayor? Before people leave, I made a mistake on the safe streets. Uh-oh. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. Yes. Okay, Wednesday, October 10th, safe streets. Uh-oh, Lynn, yes. Okay, but this is what we continue to emphasize. Okay. Yes, and again, that'll be on the website, yes. No, 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 that's okay. I know it's important to get out the, the right information. Again, that's what I want to emphasize is this could have dramatic repercussions and not always for the negative, but it, you know, it can be, you know, change things around a little bit. And that's why I want to emphasize all of these various situations. And I want to make sure I check different things off. What I also wanted to mention is, again, like I said, you know, Judy Sullivan is school committee person, she apologizes, but you can't be two places at once, especially in this type of situation. <laughs> Emphasize that because the whole idea is for everyone to have a good school experience. Okay, and I'm gonna wind down with this because I did have another speaker tonight. And what was very frustrating is that um, she was not allowed to attend this evening. Okay? Now, uh, I had spoken with her, and she's a tremendous asset to the city. Her name is Andrea Burton, and she's community relations to the city of Broughton. Community relations, okay. Now, I had spoken with her about a month and a half ago, because we have to wheel and deal to get a location, get speakers, and follow up, etc. And I was told at noontime that she couldn't come because she wasn't allowed to, that I would need to go and ask the mayor if I could have her come. Okay, and the reason I wanted her to come is because she helps people navigate the various forms and other procedures that people might have come, they might come across. For example, opening a business. For example, you know, helping you with, uh, and these are more distressing situations, let's say um, a uh, domestic violence, she can, you know, get you to the right agencies. Uh, the um, same thing with what we're concerned now is it's going to get colder, and we're very concerned particularly for the senior citizens and small, young families that self-help is available for fuel assistance. She does not fill out the form for you, but she helps you get through all this. 
So many other situations. I cite one because people have two family homes. They might be doing renovations and repairs to the apartment and living in the other. There's a form you fill out, apparently, so that they can know that you're not renting out the place and collecting money because no one can you know, be living there because of the renovations and repairs you're doing. So these are many of the different forms because they're available there. And due to the situation with the elevator, we don't want anyone to go into cardiac arrest going up to the third floor when they didn't have to because they could have gone into her office. She can get someone to come down and go through all the, you know, the dynamics with you. And, and that's, that's what we're trying to do here. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult when you have a beautiful historic building that you don't want anything bad to happen to, but you want a modern day elevator to meet the needs of the people. So anyway, again, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank um, also BCA, Broughton Community Access. So everybody will be able to visit, is get this on YouTube or they will be able to see it on Broughton Community Access probably tomorrow afternoon. And I can be reached again at 774-297-4939, or you can be, email me at aborregard at cobma.us. I want to thank everybody. The meeting is not over, but I'll let this pot shut down, and then we can uh, communicate because a couple of people have um, some things they want to mention. And I also want to highlight the fact that um, gentleman downstairs, Bill Hogan, he runs the Downtown uh, History Museum. And um, they have um, an activity or presentation going on to get people involved with a memorial for a gentleman named Fox who lost his life in World War II and he was like the first one. And also we're here in the library and it's after 8 o'clock because now the library is open till 9, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday night. And there's a whole lot going on here, art exhibits. Uh, etc. different programs and for those of you that want to do fun things with your grandkids there's the pass program and uh, you sign up with the kids things oh man what they do at Halloween everything else and it's all free so anyway again thank you